Hello everybody, welcome back to another Chariot series video on my self-critical rocket. We're on to the Inner Sphere side again here with the first of the 40 tonners, the Assassin. Now this is uh, probably one of the more underappreciated uh, mediums in Metcori Online because it just simply never really had the firepower that could help it stand out. And uh, it, it was only really saved by bloated hardpoints, let's face it. There are some really dynamite Assassin builds out there, but they don't work anything like the assassin was intended. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's a severely undergun mech for uh, the trade-off of good speed and agility, but that doesn't really translate as well, obviously, in mech line as it does on tabletop, so uh, the, the assassin definitely needed some help. Now, the developers uh, at PGI did basically cram in all of the variants at the time of the assassin's introduction to the game. Obviously at the time, Fedcom Civil War Tech hadn't been added, so they had to make do with other variants that they could sort of make up that were as close to. So you can actually build this assassin, the ASN-30, from the ASN-26. It has the same hardpoint setup. Uh, you need a single energy in the right arm and a ballistic in the right torso, and if you build this from the ASN-26, you can make the ASN-30. Now the background on this mech is that it was built uh, specifically for the Fedcom Civil War on the Lyran side uh, by Defiance Industries, they made it under license apparently, uh, with the idea of making something that I guess could be a little more combat effective than the standard one, it gave it double heat sinks, it had a light fusion engine, uh, the aforementioned LB-5 in the right torso, and a single uh, ER medium laser, so it loses its LRM-5 and its SRM in favour of a one single uh, ballistic punch. It does make it quite unique amongst assassins, as I believe it's the only ballistic equipped version out there. Uh, the Dark Death doesn't quite count because, funnily enough, there's no actual written stats of what the Dark Death ever carried, other than the mention that there is one used by a notable pilot. And uh, I don't think any book has ever explained it, unless someone can point me toward that book, that would be really helpful, because I'd love to be able to build the Dark Death proper. So, yeah, um, the ASN-30 is... From what I can tell, is a harasser. Now, uh, historically, in the Battletech universe, it was a failure, this model. Uh, the ASN-30 did not live up to expectations for the Lyran side, and uh, apparently very few were produced. Now, few could be uh, a couple of hundred, maybe uh, a limited production run of a hundred, who knows. Uh, but it would suggest that uh, having one of these in the Battletech universe would be more of a collector's item at that point than an actual usable battle mech, uh, or one that you would want to use regularly. The LB-5 is a nice touch, if we had ammo switching it would mean it could engage at range with its with solid shot and then switch over to cluster rounds uh, when you've got mechs that are opened up, but sadly that never became a feature. Maybe in MechWarrior 5, I should save that for a question in the future in an AMA session, will, I, will LBs have uh, switchable ammo types? Although I think people have asked, and I don't think they're going to do it. Anyway, so um, I actually like this version though. Um, it's fun, it's it's pretty simple, straightforward, you can stick in tons of ammunition. Uh, I mean the mech already gains uh, some added uh, weight from the uh, free weight from the fact that it loses some other ammunition based weapons but uh, its its armor does increase by a whole two ton which for the assassin is quite important because yeah as the standard ones are not that well armored either it's it's undergunned and under armored it's a uh, it's yeah it's supposed to hunt down like mechs it was it could never do it in mech warrior line not unless you turned it into a streak two boat like uh, uh, Vark in Tor, he, he does a really good job with that mech, uh, but it's the only viable way to run an assassin. You, you could never run one stock, I've tried many times and your damage is pretty low. And to be fair, this build is not going to net you a lot of damage. This build works with uh, a, like a, a harassment group. If, if you're in one of those matches where you do get the ability to flank around and you can hit them from the flank, it can do a lot of damage. Uh, in that respect, because if, you, if you're just allowed to plink away at targets consistently, just one after the other, maybe draining the entire ammo bin, yeah, you can probably get a good damage out of it, but that's one of those perfect rounds for you, not not your average round of Macquarie Online where it's Death Ball Central with NASCARing, so. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting though, I, I, I did like this build a bit more than the, st uh, than the standard ones. Uh, I, I could see where the idea was going with this modification. Uh, when, when the writers created it. Uh, it's a bit different, uh, yet it still keeps the core premise of the Assassin intact, which is it's still agile, it's still mobile, uh, but it's got a little bit more bite to it, and it can engage at better ranges. Uh, so yeah, and it doesn't really overheat either. Outside of ammunition, that's its now, now its main drawback. 
Uh, the ER mediums, you know, it's just, it's, it's a tickling stick, as uh, as we'd say for a Ken doll. It's it's just a tickle stick. That's all that is. Hey, what's that such? Yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Christ, that's a loud purr from you, Mister. The red head. Anyway, so yeah, uh, I'd recommend having a go with it. If if you've got a spare ASN 26 lying around in your mech bay and you want to have a look and try it out for yourself, go ahead. It's fun. Uh, at least this one had a little bit more of an interesting background to it. Very few of them do. And uh, yeah, this this round's just mop up now. We're just looking for the last mech and uh, capturing the last points. Also, it's a rare conquest. Man. I didn't actually think we were going to get conquest, but yeah, it's been a while since I've uh, had a proper conquest match going. And uh, this was also a classic match where you could see that the the main body of the enemy team stayed as a big ball, and they left some of their other slow mechs behind. And my team went around, found their their rear guard, basically killed them very quickly, and then they were already down two or three guys and it was that discussion I had a, a week or so ago where you know if, if there's any kind of split in the team that's it it just it snowballs it's a domino effect and that's it it's over so yeah thanks for watching everybody hope you have a good week I'll, uh, I'll see you next time and uh, until then bye